All right, how's it going, guys? Uh, today I'm going to be answering the age-old question. Um, you know, should you buy the HCX 1000? I'm going to do a little review of it. Uh, I've had it for about seven months now. I'm going to tell you some uh, pros and cons of what I think I like about this camera. All right, so first off, first thing that's nice. I don't know if you can see that, the internal uh, lens cap, it's kind of nice. You don't have to, ever have to worry about losing it. Uh, that's nice. It's got the three rings here. All that's real good. Uh, except they're uh, focused by wire, which is not true. It's not connected to anything, so there's a little bit of lag when you're trying to adjust it. Uh, same with zoom and the iris and all that. So it's it's a little it's a little nitpicky, but it's still kind of eh, annoying. Uh, some other negatives that I didn't like about this camera. There's no toggle switches on here. Uh, when you're looking down here, can you see that? Eh, no. <laughs> so it's all just buttons, which it's okay if you're going to set up before the shoot, but if you need to make adjustments on the fly, it's nice to just be able to throw, flip a toggle switch and adjust adjust the gain or uh, change the white balance really quick. But here, if you got to uh, hit the menu, you got to hit the white balance, and it could kind of ruin your shot for like a few seconds until you figure it out. Um, so I don't like that. Um, one thing that, uh, other thing that's not very good about this camera is it's not very good in low light. Um, I do a lot of live events, like, uh, performances, stand-up comedy, uh, musicians, sometimes they're at bars, uh, dances, sometimes it's well lit on a stage, sometimes it's not, um, but when it's not very well lit, it's not very good at in low light. The good thing about this though is that the gain works very well with very little noise. I've put this up to 24 dB of gain at a wedding reception and uh, I had a, a light on here but I also used, I had it really low and I put it up to 24 dB of gain. Actually I've gone up to 30 dB of gain. There's a super gain on here. Very little noise. You almost can't even, I mean you can notice that 30 dB but unless you're, you got a very picky customer and you're you know, you're putting it on broadcast, like for a TV commercial or something, they're not going to care. They're not going to notice. It's fine for weddings. This thing is, it's it's great for weddings. Um, you just can't be afraid of using that gain. I know some people don't like using it, but I mean, unless for most consumers and people that are you're going to give it to, they're not going to notice and they're not going to complain. So natively, this is not a good camera in low light. If you're not afraid to use the gain, it's fine. It's It's a fine camera. Um, the one thing I've noticed though is, and I've seen this on a couple of different TV screens, is in low light, and I'll show you a, a clip here. In low, when the light is low, there's like a very bad ghosting effect. It's it's really weird. But then when you when you juice the gain, um, it seems to go away. But I don't I, I don't know really how to explain that. Somebody much smarter than me probably could, or not even much smarter, just a little bit smarter than me probably could explain that. Um, the battery that it comes with is excellent. It's rated at six hours. I would say that's about correct. Um, the battery life is great. Um, the only the only issue that I've come up with, and I don't know if this is like this for most cameras, it's got two SD slots. And I did this once where I was recording a show and I, I had a backup one and I had it set to record to both cards at once. And after about an hour and a half, one of the cards filled up and the other card still had about an hour and a half left. It stopped recording to both cards after one of them stopped. So I had nothing, which I don't know if that was, if it's just this camera, but it seems like a very stupid design flaw to put in there to just, if one card fills up, you're going to stop recording both just all together to stop recording. I, it just seems kind of like a poor design. Um, it's got a record button up top here with a protective thing, um, which is kind of nice. You know, everyone, if you're carrying it like this, you don't want to accidentally hit it. So you could flip that little protective thing there. It's kind of cool. There's a lot of little cool, cool features about this camera. <coughs> Sorry. Um, fighting a little cold here. Um, other than that, it's a good camera. You just have to eh, be okay with pushing it to its limits and and all that. So I'm going to keep it short. Um, I would buy it if you get a good price for it. Um, 
I think at B&H they're going for about 2,000 used. Brand new, they're still about 2,800. Uh, I just want to see if I touched on everything I wanted to talk about here. Oh yeah, you know what? The other big thing that I don't like about this is the uh, the focusing on this. When you're using automatic fo or manual focusing, it doesn't have feet. It just has like an arbitrary number of zero to 100. You can't, I cannot figure out how to change that, which It's very frustrating because when I'm doing a, a concert or something like that, I know that the stage is about 50 to 55 feet away. I like to be able to, to dial it into 55 feet and I know that I'm good, but here it's zero to hundred and 94 doesn't mean feet. It just means 90, 94% of all the way telephoto, which doesn't mean anything. It might as well just have nothing on there as far as I'm concerned. So that's another kind of big design flaw that I, I kind of irks me. Um, yeah, and I guess that's pretty much it. Um, overall, decent camera. Might want to hold off and get the UA, uh, UX90, though. But we'll wait for that review to come. All right. Thanks, guys.